What is going on guys and welcome to a new video. So I know it's been about a week then since my last one, um, probably even longer actually, but it's just been mega, mega busy recently. The week after Chinese New Year then is always a pretty crazy one to be honest. So I've just been wrapped up, um, pretty much just sorting things out. Um, but now then things seem to have calmed down a little bit. So I will be back to uploading videos every single day. And a couple of weeks ago then we got past 3,000 subs and I promised we would do some sort of giveaway in a Q&A. So true to my word then, that is what today's video is going to be about. So I've got some questions to go through then from Instagram. Whenever I tend to ask for feedback or ask for questions or speak to you guys, I tend to do it through Instagram just because I get like a better response through there. Some, I do use the YouTube community tab, which you've probably seen, um, but I tend to get a better response from Instagram. So if you do wanna talk to me and be part of these Q and A's and things like that, um, make sure you go and follow me on Instagram. So before we get into the questions then, uh, first things first, probably the reason you're watching this video in fact is for the giveaways. So what I'm going to do then, again I put a poll out on Instagram asking for people to vote on what they wanted and they voted for one-to-one -one calls. I'll put a screenshot somewhere on the screen. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So the way they're going to work then is going to be dead easy. All you've got to do is leave a comment in the comment section down below. It can be any comment you want. It can be feedback on the video, an idea for video idea it can be a question you want to ask me whatever it is and to start with then i'm going to be giving away one call in per video one 10 minute call per video so if i do seven videos a week that's going to be seven 10 minute calls that i'm going to be giving away and i will announce the winner in every single video but i'm going to do it at the end of the video then just so i can get into the content as soon as possible and then if you want to stay for the giveaway it will be at the end of the video and i'm going to just do it through like a, it's called like a youtube random comment selector um, so every winner then will be picked at random so that being said then that is the giveaways there will be one given away on this video so if you do want to enter make sure you leave a comment down below um, and that being said then let's get into the q a what is going on then guys so i've got my phone up here um, i will put the questions on the screen as well so you can see what i'm reading from um, and as you can see i've got probably maybe 10 or so and i'm just going to start from kind of like the top left and just work my way through so first of all big thanks to everyone who did send through a question i really do appreciate it and like i said if you want to be part of these q a's things like that the live streams then make sure you follow me on instagram i'll put a link um, not a link like just like what my name is somewhere on the screen now so number one then how did you learn about facebook ads so for anybody who doesn't know then, I've been doing dropshipping and Facebook ads, social media marketing pretty much since July, I think it was kind of like June, July 2016, so a little bit over two years now. And the way I learned was pretty much just from watching YouTube videos. I didn't take a single course. I didn't pay for any knowledge. What I learned, I learned for free. And I watched pretty much just two people then to learn about dropshipping. And number one was Adrian Morrison. So he was who first introduced me to dropshipping and then I pretty much learned what I know then about Facebook ads watching a guy called Dan De Silva. Um, he's one of the OGs, he's been on YouTube a long before I have um, teaching Facebook ads, Instagram, pretty much just anything e-com and social media marketing wise. Uh, so that's how I learned then just watching that guy um, on YouTube. Question number two, what are some of the best interests for dog products and dog toys? So um, if you've watched any of my past videos, then you'll know that I am in the dog niche. Um, I do sell quite a few different products then within the dog niche. And I find then that the best interests are ones that are relatable to people who own dogs. So things like dog walking pages, dog magazines. Um, when it comes, now there's kind of like some general rules you can follow for pretty much any niche. And it's just the think of interests that people are already spending money within. So for example, their magazines. Nobody's going to be paying for a dog magazine unless they're interested in getting a dog or they own a dog. And therefore, people within that interest are going to be interested in your products because they have a dog, you who are selling a dog product. As long as it's a good product, then the chances are they'll be interested in it. So um, some general kind of rules to follow or kind of like the way of thinking then with regardless of what niche you're in is try and think of the interests that people are already spending money within. Number three then. Please review my store, coolsprint.com. So I get about 20 requests every single day, people asking me to review their store. Um, so I will have a look at your store. I'll send you just a couple of quick points um, to work on. So I'll get back to that one later. Toby GM, one product store, two Facebook ad sets with break even ROAS. Do you change them to lifetime budget or duplicate? 
So very, very rarely then will I actually duplicate an ad set. If an ad set is performing well, then I'll usually just make the changes within that ad set. The more, I have the opinion that the more kind of money you can put through an ad set, then the better, because then the more it can learn, the more data that goes through it, and the more efficiently it can perform. So I'm a big fan of lifetime budgets, and I haven't done any videos on it actually, so maybe a, a topic for the future. Um, and when I'm scaling an ad set, then I will always move them to a lifetime budget. Moving on, so what made you start dropshipping? Much love from New York, keep killing it on YouTube. So thank you very much, that's crazy to think that somebody in New York is watching. Um, so what made me start dropshipping? I guess I just saw, um, I've done videos on it so I'm not going into too much detail, but I was basically just watching Ty Lopez on YouTube and he did a couple of videos with a guy called Adrian Morrison who I just mentioned and the idea of being able to start a business using nothing but a laptop, very little money up front and the skills required to do well at it as well. Like Facebook marketing is a huge, it's a very, very valuable skill. If you can become good at marketing on Facebook, you can walk into pretty much any business in the world and get a job. As long as you can prove that you're going to bring in more money than what they're going to pay you, then everybody will want you to work for them because at the end of the day, you're going to be making the money. So that was kind of what attracted me to it so much was the fact that it was really easy to start. It was really easy to run. You could run it from anywhere in the world and the skills involved then were really valuable skills at the time and they still are now and they still will be. As long as Facebook exists, then Facebook marketing is going to be one of the most powerful marketing platforms in the world. So moving on to the next question then, what is your long-term goal in this dropshipping business? So this is a really good question and actually the first time I've ever been asked for it. So many people are kind of like worked up in achieving those short term things that they forget about the bigger picture. If you're planning on starting a dropshipping business to replace your current income, then you're going to be dropshipping in probably 5, 10, maybe even 20 years time. So if you're not making money in the very first month, then don't worry about it. Think of the long term goals. So when it comes to dropshipping then or e-com in general, then my long term goals, like ever since I started, I've had this vision of having like a huge, huge warehouse just full of racks and racks of different stock and pretty much running every single store from that one warehouse. Uh, people walking around with, with the pump trucks or forklifts, picking and packing products and just basically all of my stores running from one warehouse, loads and loads of stock, any winning products will be bought in, in bulk. The companies will still drop ship, but I tend to use drop shipping now as like a way of testing products. And if it proves more valuable uh, financially and time-wise then to source it in bulk and ship it, then that's what I tend to do. So that's kind of what my vision has always been, to have this massive, massive warehouse just full of loads, tons and tons of stock and just have people, just a really busy warehouse, people running around, picking and packing products and just shipping products out from this massive warehouse. So that's kind of like my long-term long -term goal in Ecom. Are you in a niche or one product store? So I don't actually have any one product store. So I'm going to do a video on this topic soon just because it's such a huge topic at the moment. Um, I'm not kind of sure where it's come from, but a lot of people talk about it and it is a good method. I'm not saying it's a bad method whatsoever, but me personally then I don't have any one product stores. How do you target on Facebook? So there's just multiple ways. I could probably write a book on how to do it. There's just so many different variables and stuff. Um, just go and check out the videos on my YouTube channel. I've done multiple, multiple videos then um, on different targeting methods and strategies. Next question then, what is the most money you have made from one product and how long did you scale for? So in terms of how much money I made on one product, I've never worked it out um, per product in fact I always look at the numbers overall on a monthly basis sometimes I'll look at things weekly if it's a new product I'll break it down weekly because I want to know I want that immediate feedback on whether it's producing or not whereas the kind of tried and tested products that I know are winning then I kind of just let them run monthly and I don't break it down per product so in terms of how much money I made, I couldn't give you exact figures, but in my very first year then, um, the dog collars alone, LED dog collars alone, I did about 140K just on that one product. Um, that's in sales as well, profit-wise. Um, again, I'm not sure because I don't do the profit per product. I do it as a store overall, and there were other products as well that I put through that store in that first year. So in terms of scaling, and how long do I scale a product for? Um, I don't really know how to answer this question because... 
it's just always as long as possible until I can't squeeze any more money out of it. Like the world is such a huge place that in terms of there being limitations, then there's not really any limitations. Like going back to the LED dog collars, there's just there's probably a hundred million people in the world that own dogs. Um, and in terms of like putting your ad to every single person, then it's going to be very difficult to do. It's going to be very expensive to do. So I guess I'm kind of blabbing now, but in answer to your question, then just as long as possible, like there is no time limit. I don't get to two months and then say, I'm not going to scale it anymore. I'll just keep scaling it until I can't make any more money from that product, if that makes sense. So whether that's at 500 pound a day and I can't get any more return from it, or whether it's at a thousand pound a day and I can't get a return, it doesn't really matter. I'll just try and spend as much money as possible on a particular product and still make the best profit margin as possible. Next question then, how do you identify winning products or if a product is worth testing? So I was speaking to someone recently about this topic actually and it just, it's kind of like just like a gut feeling now because I've tried and tested so many different products, I can pretty much look at a product straight away now and have a pretty good idea of whether it's going to work or not. So for all the beginners then especially out there my response would be just pick like half a dozen products and just spend five dollars on every single one and look at the results because the results going to be different for every single product and the ones that perform the best then look at the product why did that one perform best and just the more you do it then the easier you're going to find it to spot those winning products so in terms of identifying them then there are a few things you can look for so you can look for uh, whether other people are having success selling them, you can look at the order numbers on AliExpress, you can use certain websites like Thief or Ecom Hunt that are going to identify different products. And essentially what I look for is, I, when I look at a product, the first thing I think then is, is this a sociable product? So is this the kind of product that people would see on Facebook and would they share it and tag someone? Because Facebook is a social platform. So you want to sell social products. You want to sell products that people want to share and comment on because that's going to be the easiest way to get your product going viral and ultimately then increase your organic reach, which will ultimately reduce your cost per purchase. Um, and then even if a product is worth testing. So it kind of, I've kind of discussed that already. So um, how do you gauge whether it's worth testing? Um, again, those points I've really just spoken about, it just comes down to looking at a product and a bit of common sense really, just look at a product and think, will people like this? Is it just a cheap plastic piece of, piece of rubbish or is it like genuinely gonna make somebody's life better? Moving on then to the last couple. So how do you send with different shipping methods to different countries with the same store? Um, so dead simple to do then, um, especially for drop shipping, just set up the different shipping settings within your Shopify backend. You can literally lay it out country by country. And what I tend to do is group kind of like the major countries. So I'll have Europe as one set shipping rate, I'll have the UK and then I'll have America and Canada and Australia as well. And then last but not least is from Martin. Uh, shout out to Martin, he's been a big follower and support of the channel for quite a while now. I speak to him quite a lot, so thank you mate. Um, how has dropshipping changed your life? So, so I guess the best way to answer this question then is to talk about the four pillars. So if you watch Ty Lopez then he'll talk about health, wealth, love and happiness and how they're kind of like the four key ingredients to so essentially living a good life. So health wise then, my health has definitely improved since I've started doing dropshipping full time. Um, partly because I have more freedom to do what I want whenever I want. So I can go to the gym at any time. I don't have to train at peak times in the morning or after work when everybody else is there. So I can have a better workout essentially. Plus I can choose what I eat a lot more easier because I'm working from home, then I can just go and cook a proper meal whenever I want to. Um, I don't have to bring some packed lunch to work. Um, I don't ha I'm not rushing around because um, I'm not committing 10 hours a day to work in a job, so I don't get takeaways as often. So in terms of my health then, it's just dramatically improved. Um, wealth then, again, same similar story. With a nine to five job, you're limited to what your boss or what the business owner wants to pay you. Whereas with dropshipping, there is no limitations. If you make 10 pound one month, then that's because of you. If you make 10 grand one month, then that's because of you. If you make 100 grand one month, then that's because of you. And with dropshipping, then it really can be that crazy. It's just it's just absolutely crazy how fast you can scale it. 
Um, and so you really are just in command of how much you work. So in terms of wealth then, um, then I'm a lot better off now too. Health, wealth, love. Um, so <laughs> this is kind of like a difficult one. I don't go into too much detail because um, I'm a big believer in privacy, but me, when I first started the business then, if you've seen any of my previous videos, you'll know that there were some tough times and that put a lot of strains on my relationship with my girlfriend. Uh, thankfully, we're still together now, so it didn't do any permanent damage, I don't think. But it can, when things are going tough, especially the worries of bills and just anything financial pretty much, um, it can be like a difficult thing to deal with. But it's kind of like a roller coaster. There's going to be good times. There's going to be bad times. At the moment, things are really good, and hopefully, they will stay good as well. Um, and then happiness. I would say I'm a lot happier person just because purely, I love working for myself. I've never, ever, ever enjoyed working for somebody else. This is something I've always wanted to be able to do. So, in terms of just being happier in general, um, then I would say I am. So, yeah, they're kind of like the four things. Kind of like the four main things how dropshipping has changed your life. So, I guess like the main couple of things then is number one, I've been able to live life on my own terms, and number two, then I've never gone to bed or woken up in the morning then and been dreading going to work, like trying to think of different excuses and reasons to call in work and say why well, I'm not going to be there. Um, so if that does kind of like sound like something that you want in your life, then dropshipping is definitely the way to go. Like people ask me all the time, should I do dropshipping, Amazon FBA, a social media agency? And they're all good business models and you can make money in pretty much everything. Ultimately, it comes down to the kind of lifestyle you want to live. So what I've just said, if that is the kind of lifestyle you want to live, then keep doing what you're doing, keep learning, keep putting into action what you're learning um, and you will get there in the end. So that being said, guys, that's going to wrap up the video. I've been talking for way too long now. If you're still watching, thank you very much. Everybody who sent your questions in, thanks again. I really do appreciate it. And again, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Leave a comment down below to enter the giveaway. I will be announcing it in tomorrow's video at the end of the video. Um, so that being said, then, guys, thank you for tuning in and I'll see you all in the next one.